what can you do to improve the performance of your large language model for your specific use case. Hey everyone, my name is Vedelin and in this video we're going to see how you can fine tune a large language model on a custom dataset. Here we're going to be using WAMA 38B instruct model and we're going to be fine tuning it for a RAC application for financial data. Let's get started. If you want to follow along, there is a complete text tutorial that is available for ML Expert Pro subscribers and it is right under the bootcamp and then fine tuning WAMA 3 LOM for RAC. Here you can find the complete text tutorial along with the source code and explanations on each of the steps that we're going to do along with a link to a Google Club notebook. So if you want to support my work, please consider subscribing for ML Expert Pro. Thank you. Here is the process that we are going to go through in order to fine tune our WAMA3 model for our specific task. First, we are going to be building a dataset that is based on custom prompts provided from a JSON file that I'm going to show you how you can transform into Hugging Face dataset. Then we are going to be choosing and evaluating the initial performance of the base model. In our case, this is going to be the WAMA 38B instruct model. Then we are going to be setting up an adapter. In, in our case, this is going to be a WARA adapter that we are going to be using in order to tune on top of the original WAMA 3 model. Since the WAMA 3 model is quite large and probably you're not going to be able to do a fine tuning of the complete model on a single GPU, then we are going to be continuing with training and monitoring the training process. I'm going to show you the results that I got and this model was trained in roughly two hours for a single epoch. Then we're going to be creating an evaluation on a previously created test set and based on this evaluation we are going to be merging the based model that we have and we are going to be pushing the model to a Hugging Face Hub and I'm going to show you uh, some examples on how the trained model is comparing the predictions to the untrained model. The dataset that we are going to be using is available on the Hugging Face datasets. It is called Financial Q&A 10K and here you can find roughly 7000 uh, examples that are essentially paired with a question, context and an answer. These are the columns that we're going to be using. Of course, uh, you can infer from the name that this is actually a financial data set. And uh, you can see that uh, the two additional columns are filing and then ticker. We are not going to be using those, but we are going to be uh, deploying the question, answer and the context. The base model that we're going to be using is the original WAMA 38B instruct model by Meta AI, which is also available on the Hugging Face models repository. And this model is going to be a we're going to be able to put this model on a single GPU with a quantization to four bit parameters. And I'm going to show you how to do that into uh, the Google Club notebook. Other than that, a thing that you should know about this model is that it has a context length of 8K tokens, which will be quite more than we need in order to fine tune for our specific dataset. And this model has to be one of the better open models that you can use, uh, at least today. So we're going to be fine tuning this. Another bonus of this model is that it has a chat template, which uh, is provided by the tokenizer, as you can see here. And we are going to be using this chat template in order to further fine tune this model. I have the Google Club notebook now opened. And as you can see, first, I'm starting with showing you that the actual GPU that I've used during this fine tuning was a T4. Uh, I'm going to show you how you can fit the model on the T4 GPU in a bit. And here I'm installing pretty much the latest versions of the Torch library, the Transformers library, datasets, since we're going to be downloading the dataset from the Hanging Face repository then the Accelerate library and bits and bytes, which we're going to be using for the quantization of the model. Then uh, for the WARA setup, we're going to be using the PEFT library. Then we're going to be using the TRL SFT trainer or supervised fine tuning uh, trainer that is provided by this library. And then the Coward library, which I'm going to show you why we're going to be using in a bit. Uh, we have a lot of imports and most of those are based on the fact that I'm going to show you a couple of uh, plots. Uh, but the more important thing here is that I'm seeding the uh, torch and the numpy and the random 
from the Python with a seed. And then I'm specifying a path token. I'm going to show you how you can apply the path token to the tokenizer since the tokenizer, at least for 138B instruct model, doesn't come with a path token included. So we're going to be doing just that in a bit. And then uh, I'm going to be having a, a constant for the original model and then the new model that I'm going to show you how you can push to the Hugging Face repository. So first I'm going to start with uh, creating the configuration for the model itself. And here you can see that uh, I have something very basic. I'm loading the model into 4-bit and I'm using the new newer NF4 uh, format for the quant type of the 4-bit model. And uh, here I'm saying that the compute type, which are, we're going to be using for the computational part of this model is going to be a binary float 16. Uh, other than that, this is a pretty much a very standard configuration for loading the model into 4-bit format. Uh, next, I'm going to show you that uh, we are actually downloading the original tokenizer from the meta repository. And I'm adding a path token, which is going to be this path token constant right here. And I'm setting the panning side to the right. And this is just in case uh, if this is not set already. And then uh, I'm loading the model from the quantization. And then after I've downloaded or loaded the model, uh, you see that I'm actually expanding or resizing the token embeddings for this model based on the length of the tokenizer since we've added a new token right here. Now, why I do that uh, from what I found, if you're training with more than one training example per batch, I've seen that usually the embeddings or the tokenizer is getting uh, scrambled and it appears that the at least the loss and the responses don't get very good and what i found is that the models continue to jumbo or try to speak a lot and repeat some of the sentences if i set this padding token it appears that uh, the model is actually stopping to generate itself as it should and uh, this actually helped me to consider that also, I would like to know that I've tried to actually fine tune the base model. Uh, that is the model that didn't uh, include any instruct fine tuning. And on that model, also without the path token, uh, it appears that uh, this model continues to uh, repeat the text uh, forever and ever. So if you have another solution to this problem, please let me know down into the, into the comments of this video. Uh, and you'll see that we're downloading the model. Uh, you can see that the model was able to be loaded successfully. And this is the config. Uh, you can see that we are actually only adding the quantization config right here. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm showing you the beginning of, sequ of sequence token the end of sequence token and the new path token that we've added. Those are already into our tokenizer. Okay, so I'm going to continue with the original data set. And here I'm going to show you how you can essentially create your own custom data set. So you don't have to rely on some pre-processed data set. And for example, you can have a data frame or a JSON. And from that, uh, you can actually create your own custom hugging face data set. So I'm going to start by downloading the original hugging face data set, and I'm going to convert it into a data frame. I'm going to see a couple of examples right here. Uh, these are the columns that we have originally. And the first thing is, uh, as I've already told you, I'm going to convert this data set into a data frame. So this is something that you might have in the real world, uh, for example, a data frame or CSV file, or uh, you can have some SQL or uh, SQL database that you can convert into a CSV file or a data frame. And from here, we're going to be building our custom data set. And this is how uh, I'm going to do this. So first, uh, something that I really like to do is to check whether or not this dataset contains any new values, uh, since this will probably blow up our gradients during training and our boss is not going to be very happy with that. So I see that uh, pretty much uh, everything is here. We have 7000 examples. And then after this is complete, I'm going to be building this function called format example in which I'm going to be using the question, the answer and the context for a specific question along with this uh, very simple system prompt. 
on top of that i'm going to be calling uh, apply chat template and i don't want this to get tokenized so in order to get these messages and run through this uh, i'm going to show you that this is going to be running through every example and i'm going to be adding a new column column text to our data frame and then i'm going to continue with counting the actual tokens that our tokenizer is going to be doing in order to have their count into our final data frame and this is something that you might get uh, for example here is a data frame or a sample of the first couple of examples five to be exact and you can see the question the context the answer and now we have the text along with a token count for each text i'm going to show you why we're going to be using this but let's see a simple example or the first example that we get from the text here you can see that the tokenizer has added all of the specific tokens that are actually included within the template you can see the system prompt then you can see that uh, the question is actually here sorry this is uh, the system prompt then this is the question from our specific case and then this is the context provided here between these triple ticks uh, this is ending right here and then we have a uh, answer from the assistant so this is going to be the answer from our data set and then we have end of sequence id token at the end so this is pretty much the format that the model is going to be receiving our text in and then i'm showing you a histogram or a, let's say a plot that tells how often tokens be between for example 100 uh, zero and 200 100 etc tokens are relevant here and you can see our data set is heavily skewed towards uh, 300 or less tokens right here which is a good thing since we want to reduce the number of tokens that we're going to be using in order to have uh, a faster training so this is a uh, good for us and uh, i'm going to be actually reducing the number of tokens under 512 and in our case uh, we're seeing that only three of the examples right here have more than 512 tokens so what i'm going to do is to actually remove those examples uh, and then i'm going to sample uh, 6000 examples and based on that i'm going to be splitting those into a train validation and test sets so to continue with that i'm going to be using the train test split from the sk Warn library i'm going to be first creating a train set and then the rest of the data set i'm going to be splitting that into a validation and test sets so these are the results that i have and from that i'm going to be saving a roughly 4000 examples for training 500 for validation and 100 for testing and this essentially is going to be our data set that we're going to be building and i'm going to be using two json on the data frame that we have uh, i'm going to orient towards the records and i want this to be stored as json wines or json l so essentially what i'm going to do next is to get or what our custom data set that we've just created and this is essentially how you are going to be loading a json file and this is the mapping between the json files so what we have here is our own custom data set that we pre-processed enabled and created finally based on the JSONs, and then uh, at the last step we're actually loading our own custom data set so this is essentially the process that you need to follow in order to build a data set for fine-tuning your LLM. next i'm going to show you that uh, actually our data set is correctly split you can see the number of rows right here and uh, i'm going to just be looking at another example of the text which is again a text with all of the tokens that are needed to be applied based on the chat template okay so next we're going to continue with testing the original model this is be, be before fine-tuning the base model that is I'm going to be creating this pipeline i'm going to be pi pipelining the model in the tokenizer this is for the text generation task and i want this to produce as much as uh, 128 tokens at most 
So I'm going to be creating this helper function, which essentially goes through the example right here and does the exact same thing that we've did before, but it is actually removing the original or the uh, final answer or the correct answer from the prompt. And this is actually the test prompt that we're going to be building. Here is an example of that. Uh, one important thing here to note is that I'm adding add generation prompt equal to true. So this will actually add this part to the prompt, uh, which you don't have to do on your own. And again, the model is going to be promptly uh, formatted promptly. All right, so this is the example right now. And if I run the prompt through the pipeline, you see that this is the original answer and this is the prediction for our model. You can also see that the, this took us roughly 10 seconds uh, in order to produce the uh, prediction, which is quite slow at least on this GPU, but yeah, the GPU is quite slow as well. So uh, this is the first example. Let's see another one. Uh, how did the company net earnings amount to in fiscal 2022? Net earnings were 17.1 billion in fiscal 2022. So relatively straightforward question in a context. Let's see. Uh, you can see that the answer was pretty simple. Uh, but Huama 3 was quite verbose, at least with the prompt. Of course, uh, if you play around with the prompt, you might get better results. Uh, but yeah, probably uh, with some fine tuning, you get still better results. Another example, let's see at the answer and very verbose answer right here compared to the original very simple answer. So. Uh, I'm going to essentially get the 100 example in the test data sets and I'm going to be running the predictions throughout the uh, pipeline that we have so we can compare the results at the end to the trained model. And of course, this model is quite verbose. I'm not sure if it is correct uh, at all of the prompts, but at least in my experience, I'm not very happy with that and probably I would go with further tuning the model, changing it all together, uh, tuning the prompts or completely fine tuning it based on the performance that you require. Another thing that I'm going to show you is uh, I've seen a lot of examples of fine tuning those large language models, but most of the times the worst function was calculated on the complete generation of the text which is something that we don't really want since we want to only judge how well the performance of the generation is doing, but not the performance of the already inputted text. So what I'm going to do is to get the final token of the head and header ID. Let me show you this. So this is this token right here. And after that, I'm going to be only uh, looking at the was after this token. So you can see that this data collector for completion only uh, language modeling task is going to be essentially masking the tokens with minus 100. So this will not be calculated during the was. So this will also speed up the calculation or the training process that you have and all of the rest tokens are going to be used for calculating the loss essentially. So pretty neat trick uh, if you want to essentially speed up or get even better results with uh, this type of collator, which is available from the Transformers library, of course. Okay, so we have the collator, we have the date set. Let's see what we have for the model. So what I do in order to choose which layers to target with the Wara uh, fine tuning is uh, Pretty much I'm going to be choosing each linear layer right here. And I would say that the WAMA architecture is pretty straightforward with the WAMA decoder layer. So I'm going to be using the query key value uh, and then uh, pretty much every linear layer that we have right here. And for the MLP part, this was the attention part of the architecture, if you will. And for the uh, multi-layer perceptron layer, whatever, uh, I'm going to be essentially targeting again all of the 
layers that are of course linear as well so this is something that is coming from the original war paper i believe and if i recall correctly they were specifying that you need to target all of the linear layers this is how they get the best results possible and in our case i'm going to specify these linear layers right here within the target modules and uh, i'm going to be specifying the causal language modeling task Awonk with a rank of the WARA config of 32 and WARA alpha of 16. And if you're not familiar with the WARA fine tuning, uh, there is a video on my channel that uh, pretty much describes in a bit more detail how WARA is performing. But essentially, this is uh, you can think of, of creating a smaller model on top of the original model. And this smaller model, you're going to be essentially fine tuning only the weights of this small model while freezing the large model on the bottom of it and when a prediction comes uh, the prediction is going to go through the original model and then it is going to go through your own fine-tuned adapter on top of that so this is the way that i pretty much think of when thinking of war models and then i'm going to be preparing this model for kb training since we are using quantization right here and then i'm going to be applying the work config on top of the model that we have which is again the original llama 3 model so how many parameters we are actually going to train with uh, you can see here that of course the model offers uh, roughly uh, the, all of the parameters uh, are roughly 8 billion parameters while we're going to be training only about 1.034 percent or roughly 84 million parameters on top of that and this is uh, actually a very good rule of thumb if the model is large enough think of like five six or more billion parameter models then probably one percent or even half percent of the parameters uh, depending on some experiments that you might do are going to be enough in order to train the model on your specific tasks of course this will depend on the data set and the complexity of the task that you're going to be doing but roughly one half percent one and a half percent is a good rule of thumb for larger LOMs. and next i'm going to be loading the tensor board with this model i'm going to go through the training itself in a bit so i want to give a big shout out to philip schmidt and i'm going to link down his blog into the description of this video but more importantly he specified this part right here uh, which is very important we don't want the tokenizer to add any special tokens and we don't want any additional separator tokens this is provided via the dataset keyword arguments of the sft trainer uh, and again this blog post is very nice how to fine tune lms in 2024 with hugging face so i go and have a read on top of that so back to our config as you can see we have a lot of configuration here uh, i'm specifying the maximum number of tokens uh, 512 uh, this is based, of course, on the uh, experience that we got with the token counts. The text field that we're going to be using is just going to be the text. Uh, we are going to be training for a single epoch. Probably it would be great to train for more. Uh, and probably you get even better results. For example, two epochs might be great. So uh, let me know if you train the model for two epochs and let me know of the results so i'm going to be training on the t4 so this pretty much allows me to have uh, two examples per batch uh, i'm going to do the same thing for the evaluation and i'm accumulating for four this is actually four times two so the gradient accumulation is going to be doing eight samples for the gradient update which is uh, quite good at least on a single gpu uh, i'm going to be using the special item with way decay fix page optimizer that is uh, i believe coming from the bits and bytes library as well and this is for the 8-bit optimization so this optimizer is quite good it appears to be working quite well and quite fast on top of that uh, next i'm going to be essentially evaluating every uh, 20 percent of the training process and uh, running through the value uh, sorry the validation set i have a very small learning rate which appears to be working quite all right uh, also, I have a very small warm-up ratio, about 10%, so during this time, uh, yeah, actually this is quite redundant since I'm using a constant 
uh, warning rate scheduler, but I've tried with linear. It appears to be doing something, but not that impressed with it. And I want the responses or the results to be in a safe tensor format. And these are the arguments that I'm going to be essentially getting from the Philip Schmidt blog post that I've shown you. And I'm seeding the training process itself. Not really sure if this is going to be completely reproducible for you, but it appears to be doing something for the seeding of the values, at least uh, when you have the correctly seeded data set. And then uh, the training itself is quite straightforward. I'm going to be passing the configuration, the model, the data set for training, for the validation, the tokenizer, and the collator, uh, which is again going to be calculating the was only on the parts that are going to get completed by the model. And then uh, you can see that I'm essentially calling the dot train method. And this is the result from this. Uh, you can see that the training is uh, somewhat junky, if you will, uh, but it goes quite well. The validation was, on the other hand, is also uh, decreasing somewhat but it is quite slower in the decrease rate. Uh, I recall that we have only 500 examples for the validation. Probably if you increase that to, let's say, 1000 or 2000, you will probably get a much smoother validation most. And again, if you train the model for a bit longer, you probably get somewhat of a better results as well. OK, so after this is complete, I'm going to be saving the model into our uh, local repository or file system and after that i'm going to be essentially building the model uh, again this is done on the another actually i did this on a p100 since the gpu memory for the t4 wasn't enough to load the model without the tokenization or the quantization sorry and i essentially loaded the model with the p100 uh, gpu applied the path adapter on top of that and then merged the model into a single model and what i did after that is to essentially upload the model and the tokenizer to uh, the hugging face hub and i wanted this to be split into maximum shared site of five gigabytes so this is the public model that is available on the hugging face models it is called wama 38 b instruct finance rack and here you can find the complete text tutorial or uh, sample examples along with some of the predictions that i got from this model uh, more importantly you can find the files uh, you can see these are essentially the tensors with the shards of five gigabytes at most uh, which is quite good along with the generation config and the tokenizer itself along with a sample of the predictions and then we also have the training metrics that are available for the tensor board and uh, let's see what we got here i'm going to show you something so here you can look through the complete training process you can see that it took at least for the validation was uh, hour and a half and it appears to be performing quite well again probably you're going to be uh, quite happy with deploying this or running this for a bit longer and this is uh, the training course uh, roughly hour and 40 minutes but again the complete training walk is available within the human face repository so we have the trained model and now i'm going to essentially load our data set once more and just for reproducibility of course and i'm going to be downloading the model from the hugging face hub i'm going to be applying the quantization that i did with the original model so we are going to be doing a completely fair uh comparison between the base model and the fine-tuned version of the model also i'm going to be uh, getting the tokenizer from our own repository since uh, it contains all of the padding config etc and this is going to be go heading and getting all of the data for our model again i'm going to be creating a pipeline and in this pipeline i'm going to be seeding uh, or expecting at most 128 tokens so this is again the first uh the first response that i got and this is now the prediction of the model uh, I'm going to show you a couple of comparisons in a bit, but this is now much more aligned with what we have in the original data set. 
not these bullet list points that we got in the original. Uh, next, the answer from the prediction here, again, quite uh, compact and very like what we get in the data set here. Next, I'm going to show you another example. Uh, here, you can see that our even our fine-tuned model is quite verbose. Yeah, it, it did uh, provide a lot of text, but again, uh, the response is correct. Let's see how many examples we are going to be getting here and how we're going to compare those to the untrained prediction. So this is the predictions data frame and I'm going to be essentially creating uh, or adding those predictions of with the trained model. Uh, so I'm going to be taking a sample of 20 examples and we're going to go through some examples together. Uh, the first example, this is the trained model and this is the untrained one. Uh, you can see that we got a much better response from the trained model, at least based on our quality uh, analysis. Again, here the formatting and the words appear to be quite well matched to the ones that we have from the uh, trained model compared to the untrained model. Okay, next. Uh, you can see that the trained model is actually providing a very short response compared to the answer in the data set. Uh, on that case, I'm not really sure if this is completely answering the question, but at least it appears to be that our model is uh, very biased towards shorter answers on some occasions, of course. Uh, okay, so uh, here another example. Mechanical engineer from the University of California and from Stanford School, etc. Uh, again, this appears to be quite well written. And this is, uh, let's say, uh, an additional word that I would not like to see into my rack system. Uh, and this is the case when you don't fine tune at least your prompt enough with those types of models, something that we are not seeing into the fine tuned model. Uh, again, a very good example based on our fine tuning. Uh, another example where the untrained model is adding a bit more verbosity and uh, some formatting that is actually not needed. Uh, concrete number here. Well, the untrained one uh, has a lot of verbosity. Yeah, you can you can go through those examples uh, and you'll probably be quite happy with the results that you get from the fine tuning. And probably if you do some more fine tuning, you'll be even happier with the results. So this is it for this video. We've seen how you can fine tune a WAMA 3 8B instruct model on a custom data set. And we've seen how much better this model is performing based on our fine tuning compared to the base model. So what do you think? Is this model performing much better or is it exceeding your expectations? Let me know down into the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Also, join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.